welcome back to the breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to start a roguelike adventures and dungeons server. This is actually a really, really cool mod pack that basically is a dungeon crawling kind of game in Minecraft, having tons of different like realms as well, from vanilla Minecraft, obviously, to the Twilight Forest, to the Aether, and even the Between Lands. This gives you tons of exploration to do in Minecraft, and while well, it's fun to do by yourself, it's even more fun to do it with friends, and that's why in this video I'm going to be showing you exactly how to start a roguelike adventures and dungeon server so you can play it with your friends and do some dungeon crawling together in minecraft first and foremost though this is a pretty intricate process it's not easy to start a mod pack server you need a pretty good computer one with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a newer processor to be able to run roguelike adventures and dungeons on your computer and run the server on your computer. This is also only meant for your friends and family. If you want to make this a public server where anyone can join, this is not going to work for you. So what if you don't have a good enough computer? Or what if you do want a server that anyone can join? Well, it's very simple. Go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash apex, where with just one click, you can set up a Minecraft server running roguelike Adventures and Dungeons. It's a very, very simple process. I'm actually doing it on your screen right now. It is just a few clicks by your server and then one click to select it, confirm, and then you're done. That is it. Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons is set up. You can check out Apex at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Also, you don't have to port forward on an Apex server, so that's worth noting. Nevertheless, though, if you want to use Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons on your own computer with your own server running on your own computer, let's go ahead and jump on into it. First and foremost, we need to go to the second link down below. All of the links I mentioned in this video, by the way, are actually linked down below. As you can see up here, there is quite a bit of them, but they're all linked down below, and we're going to be starting with this one, which is the server files download. For this, we can come over here to the right-hand side of the screen. You see where it says Minecraft 112 server packs? You want to go ahead and click on the one that's right under that, rad server pack. Click on that, and it will take us over to here, where we can see at the top, this does say rad server pack. We want to click the gray download button next to it. If it doesn't say server pack, you want to make sure that it does and then click that download button. It'll then download in the bottom left. And as you can see, this is quite a big file, 330 megabytes. So it is going to take a minute to download. While that's downloading, let's actually go to the third link in the description down below and it'll take you here. We do need to download the Twitch app because we need to install roguelike adventures and dungeons locally in addition to with our server. Your friends will also need to install roguelike adventures and dungeons to be able to play on your server. So if you want a dedicated video that you can send that doesn't have all this server stuff into it, you can check out the i at the top of your screen right now. That is my video on how to do that. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and download the Twitch app with this big white download button here. That will then go ahead and download in the bottom left. It should download a lot quicker than Roguelike Adventures in Dungeons Server Pack because, well, it's a much smaller file. 88 megabytes versus 330 megabytes. Once the Twitch app is downloaded, I will see you to go ahead and get things installed there while we're still waiting on the Rad Server Pack to download. We can now see here in the bottom left, this is now finished downloading, the Twitch app at least. We still have about nine minutes left on our rad download there. No worries. If we minimize our browser, Twitch is here. This unconfirmed download is actually the server files downloading. If this isn't on your desktop, though, don't freak out. Click the Windows icon up here and then type in Downloads. By the way, your Windows icon will not be in the top left. Yours will be in the bottom left of your screen. So you'll click on the Windows icon on the bottom left, type in Downloads. And then you'll have a folder here titled Downloads. The Twitch app will be in there. Drag that to your desktop just for ease of use. Additionally, this will download. The server files will download into your download downloads folder. Once those are done, once they are finished downloading, drag them to your desktop as well. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and open up the Twitch app here by just double clicking on this Twitch setup. So double click on that and it will open up this nice installer. Go and click on install and go ahead, get everything installed and then it will open up the Twitch app. This Twitch setup file we downloaded here, we can just delete. Now you will have to log into your Twitch account and as you can see, I'm already logged in. So I can just log in as Nick's Games. You might need to log into your Twitch account. You probably will need to log into your Twitch account, and yes, you must have a Twitch account to install Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons. It's 100% free to set one up, so just go ahead, set one up, and you'll be good to go. Nevertheless, once you're on the Twitch app, you can say no thanks, I'll do that later. You want to click on the Mods tab right up here at the top. It'll take you here where you want to click on Minecraft. You'll then have to click on a purple install button in the bottom. Right click on that. It'll install and then you'll land on this page. Obviously you won't have stone block. This will be blank here. Then you want to go to browse all mod packs and then you want to type in rogue, R-O-U-G-E, and then I've actually mixed spelled it. It's R-O-G. Yui, there it is, Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons. You have a purple install button under Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons. Click on that purple install button and it will begin downloading and installing 
roguelike adventures and dungeons. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. I'm also going to go ahead and open up our browser here where we can see that this is now downloaded 110 megabytes of a 330 megabyte download. Put that right there. There we go. And now whenever this is finished down here and this has in fact installed, I will see you to, uh, well, get everything finished installing. By the way, we are kind of knocking out two things here. We are also downloading the mod pack roguelike adventures and dungeons locally because we'll need to, that as well. Like I said, your friends need to do that using the link at the eye. But nevertheless, we're doing both of these at the same time. When they both finished, I will see you to uh, continue on with the tutorial. And there we go. Both are now downloaded. We can see that right down here, the Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons mod pack server files have downloaded. And over here, we can say we do have the purple play button on Roguelike Adventures and Dungeons. And fine, it has also finished downloading. So we can go ahead and click on the purple play button in the Twitch app here. And we can actually go ahead and close out of the Twitch app. We don't need it anymore. The Minecraft launcher will open here. You'll need to log in to the Minecraft launcher using the same information that you log into the normal Minecraft launcher with. And you might notice this is the normal Minecraft launcher. So just go ahead and log on in with that information. Once you're here, you want to click on the three lines in the top right of the screen and then click on launch options here. See that? Click on launch options. You should have a roguelike adventures and dungeons. Click on that. And then we want to focus right here on JVM arguments. Now, honestly, 3000 is probably good enough to run this mod pack. It's not the most RAM intensive mod pack out there, but I'm going to go ahead and open to 4,000 megabytes of RAM to run it. I'm also going to change our resolution here, which is 1920 by 1080. That is going to be 1080p. You do not have to change your resolution, but I'm changing mine just so you guys can see it better later. Now we want to go ahead and click on save, click on news, and then click on the little green arrow next to the play button here. Select roguelike adventures and dungeons. Make sure it again says roguelike adventures and dungeons at the bottom of the play button, and then click on the play button. Now Minecraft will open up with roguelike adventures and dungeons installed. However, the thing is, we still need to set up the server, so let's go ahead and do that. First and foremost, we want to find our server files. They may be in the downloads folder that we accessed earlier. By the way, I'm just going to take and drag this over to the corner here. I'm going to let you see it starting up, but uh, just kind of get it out of the way. That way we don't have to we don't have to see what's going on. It'll just start up on its own, and then once it's ready, we'll see it. But nevertheless, here is our server files download. Go ahead and right-click on these, and then click on Extract All. Now, if these are books or something like that, like a WinRAR file, that's fine. Just right-click Extract All, and you'll be good. Then click on Extract and it will go ahead and get these extracted here. As you can see, quite a bit of items, over 5,000 items as a matter of fact. So as with everything with a mod pack, this will take some time. Just like it'll take some time for the mod pack to open over here. It'll take some time for the mod pack to open right here and get extracted. It all takes time with mod packs. If you want to do this stuff fast, to go with Apex because it gets things done quickly. However, if you're doing it yourself, it's going to take some time. So I will see you once this has finally been extracted here to, uh, well, continue on with the tutorial. And there we go. Our server has finished extracting here, and it will open up a file like this. You should have this rad server pack right here. See that? Go ahead and drag that to your desktop. And there we go. Now it will automatically just like open up this folder right here with this information in it. So what this is, is basically everything we need to get our server up and running. Now, it is always important if there is a readme here to double click on it and read the text file. Open the ULA text file, change to true, there you go. And now configure the server properties file. If you need, don't change level dash type OTG and level name bio bundle. We will need to do some stuff in there, but we won't be changing those. And then run the server with launch server dot bat. Now, we're also going to be port forwarding because if you just did that, you wouldn't be able to run the server and play it with your friends. It would just be able to be joined by you, right? So we actually need to port forward to be able to play on the server. We're going to be doing that here. First and foremost, though, we do need to go ahead and double click on the eula.txt and then change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. We also want to make sure that the Minecraft eula is something we agreed to with this server, which it is, so we can change eula equals true. Now I go ahead and click File, Save, and then we can double click on Launch Server .bat here. That's going to do everything for us. At that point, we might need to go ahead and click that it's okay by clicking on More Info and then clicking on Run Anyway. I promise this is 100% safe to do that. You're seeing me do it. You saw it, did it with me there. It is 100% safe to do. The reason it's 100% safe to do is because this is from the creator of the Rad Mod Pack, which has over 300,000 downloads. 100% safe. Nevertheless, once we've done that, we can go ahead 
come over here and check out Roguelike Adventures in Dungeons. I actually need to uh, scale this up a little bit because the music is playing in the background. Why can't I access the m settings down there? So that is a little annoying. One second while I mute my Minecraft up here. There we go, Minecraft is muted. You could not hear the music at all, but I could. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and just kind of drag this down. We can select multiplayer there, and that's really all we need to be able to do. It is still a little weird that that's formatted like that, though. Nevertheless, how do we go ahead and port forward for our server? We'll just minimize that to allow our friends to join. Well, it's pretty simple. You want to click on the Windows icon. Again, it's in the top left for me. It's in the bottom left of your screen. Click on that Windows icon. Type in CMD exactly like that. You should have something called Command Prompt. Click on that. And then in Command Prompt here, type IP C O N F I G. IP config exactly like that and hit enter. Here you'll find some different things. As you can see, we have an IPv4 address and a default gateway. Both of these we're going to be using, so make notes of both of them or just leave command prompt open so you can access it later, but you will need these numbers later. You actually need your IPv4 address right now. So as we can see, we are unloading dimensions over here, unloading dimension, unloading dimension, unloading dimension, and when you see unloading dimensions, your server's actually started. Kind of weird, I know, but it's just the truth. Go ahead and type stop in the uh, server console over here and hit enter. It will go ahead and stop the server and we can press any key to continue. Now we want to find our server.properties file. Now if I double click on this, it opens in Notepad. If yours doesn't, just select Notepad is where you want to open it. Then you want to find server-ip right here and put in your IPv4 address that is over here next to server IP. Now in my case, that's 192.168.1.123. Now yours may be completely different, and if it is, that is perfectly okay. Whatever yours is, type it in over here. That's why we went and found these numbers over here. Go ahead and click File, Save, right like so, and now we can close out of the server.properties file. Go ahead and now take your default gateway right here, Come up to your browser, right like so. Go ahead and make this full screen here. And then we want to go ahead and click on a new tab. Just open up a new tab, click on that plus button over there. And then in that new tab, put your default gateway, which in my case is 192.168.1.1. And it will open up this right here. Once we're in here, we want to go ahead and enter our router's login information. Now, if you don't know your router's login information, and most likely you don't, no worries. We have something to help you out. Is a link in the description down below showing you how to find your router's password. This walks you through step-by-step -step things that you can do, different methods to find your router's password. Come back over here to the login box and enter those. By the way, your login box most likely looks completely different from my login box, and that is perfectly okay. It's perfectly fine that your login box looks different. Go Go ahead and in this login box, enter your router's username and password once you find it. Again, this article walks you through how to do that. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and log into my router and I'll meet you once I have. There we go. I'm now logged in my router, enter my username and password, and things are loading up. Most likely after you log into your router, it will look completely different from what I see here and what you have here, and that is okay. We yet again have another tutorial linked down in the description down below on how to port forward. This video specifically walks you through port forwarding on the best routers out there, the top routers of today, and the reason we had that video is so you can watch it, and even if your router isn't on that list, you'll figure out what port forwarding is most likely called on your router. I'll also be going through all of the most popular names and all of the most popular places that port forwarding can be in this video, but I would recommend watching our complete guide to port forwarding here that walks through everything individually on a bunch of different routers, not just on Linksys, which is what we have here. Nevertheless, for a Linksys router, it is in security. Now for you, it may be in advanced. It may be in advanced, advanced. It may also be in security. It might be apps and gaming. It might be port forwarding slash port triggering. It might be NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It might be NAT gaming. In AT gaming. It could be tons of different things, but what you're looking for is port forwarding. For me, it is in security. Then, as I said, it could be an apps in gaming, and guess what? For me, it is an apps in gaming. For you, it could be in security advanced. It could be an advanced advanced. It could be an admin advanced. There's tons of different ways and places that port forwarding could be for you, but again, it is in security and then apps in gaming for me. But then I have to click on one more thing, single port forwarding. Click on the single port forwarding, and here we are where I can port forward. Yours most likely isn't that complicated. It's not that deep and your router, but nevertheless, you now know all the different names that port forwarding can be called. Once you've found it, though, 
you'll be able to see something like this. You'll have a place for an ID or an application name. You'll have an external port and an internal port or a local port and a public port. But nevertheless, you'll have two options for ports. You also have an option for a protocol where you can select both TCP or UDP or TCP slash UDP. And then you'll have a place for a local IP or a device IP. What do we enter in here? Well, for application name, it doesn't really matter. This could also be called ID for you. Doesn't matter. Just enter in Minecraft. For anything involving port whatsoever, period, if it says the word port, you're going to enter 25565. Whether it's external port or internal port, whether it's port 1 or whether it's port 2, it doesn't matter. If it mentions port, you want to enter in 25565. Right like that. For protocol, you want to make sure both are selected or TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP. You basically want to make sure both protocols are selected. And if you can't select both protocols, just port forward twice, once for TCP and then once for UDP. Then nevertheless, let's go ahead and just click on both here. Now for our device IP, this is going to be our IPv4 address that we have right over here. In my case, 192.168.1.123. Yours may be completely different and yours might actually just be a drop down box where you want to select your computer as your local IP address. Now, for most people, that is port forwarding. You can go ahead and click Save, and then you can click Apply. But for some of you, you need a public IP address. Well, where do you get that from? Well, no matter what, you're actually going to need your public IP address, so let's go get that. You want to go to the description down below, what's my IP, and it will take you here. Now, on this screen, you have a black box over here. You also have a black box over the first three digits of my IP, the first three different numbers. You can see the last three, one, two, eight, because that way you know I'm using the same IP here as we're going to be using later in Minecraft. I'm going to go ahead and copy our IP address there. But you might be wondering, why are there black boxes over this? Well, as I mentioned on the front end, this is only for you and your friends. If anyone gets your public IP address, guess what they can do with it? They can hit you offline, DDoS you. They can also figure out where you live. You can see all this information over here can be found through your IP address. So you've got to be very, very careful. And that's why I recommend using someone like Apex, who has DDoS protection, who is meant for your server to be public, meant for you to give it to everyone in the world and be perfectly fine. That's why Apex is so great. That's why I recommend them. Plus, you don't even have to do any of that port forwarding stuff if you are with Apex. Nevertheless, once you've got your public IP here and it has been copied, we can then go back to our router if you need your public IP address over here. Go ahead and paste that in. Otherwise, we can go ahead and start our server by double clicking on the launch server.bat file. Then we also want to go ahead and open up Roguelike Adventures here. I'm going to get this kind of better, better laid out here. There we go. We can actually, we were able to start to see the, the option files down there. What we want to go ahead and do is click on multiplayer here, and then we're going to direct connect. Now we're going to direct connect to our public IP address, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. But as you can see, there are these same last three digits. We need to wait for the server to get up though, so I'll see you once the server is started. Just as before, the server is started. Once you start seeing unloading dimension, unloading dimension, unloading dimension, there we go. That stopped, so the server is started. We can join the server using our public IP address over here. Again, as you can see 128 same one we found earlier on what's my ip.com click join server and it will join on in now if you can't join off of your ip address you can try joining off of your local ip address or your ipv4 address type that in there hit enter and you should be able to join if you can't then that means there is an issue with your server if you can however and just you can't join off your public ip address or your friends can't join off your public ip address that means that you have some issue with your port forward if there's either an antivirus or there is a firewall on your computer or on your router blocking the connection. Nevertheless, as we can see here, we are in roguelike adventures and dungeons here. As we can see, everything is set up. We've got all this stuff in our inventory. And for your friends to join this server, all you'll do is give them your public IP address. They'll enter that into their roguelike adventures and dungeons. They do need to download it locally, as we discussed on the front end. But nevertheless, they'll enter that into their roguelike adventures and dungeons click play, join server, and it will join them right on in here. Nevertheless, guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Again, if your friends can't join your server or you can't join via your public IP, it is an issue with a firewall either on your computer, oh no, rip, on your computer or on your router causing that issue. Nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. There's a, a festive creeper there. Um, that's weird. Anyway, your roguelike adventures and dungeon server is now set up. And if you have any questions, again, post those in the comment section down below. And if you are looking for an awesome Minecraft survival server, come check out our server, play.breakdowncraft.com. It is the best server in the multiverse. It's actually ran on Apex. So if you want to try Apex before you set up a server there, it's a great way to do it. Come play on our server, play.breakdowncraft.com. Anyway, again, my name is Nick. 
I suck at outros. This has been quite a long one, and I'll see you next time. Peace.